Hi, I'm Srini from AG Consultancy and Apps, and welcome to this short session on how invoice processing can be automated in SAP with two of the best breed tools, UI Paths RPA and AB's Intelligent Document Processing. These are, as you would recognize, the usual steps in invoice processing automation, receipt of invoice and its conversion into electronic format such as PDF followed by extraction of data from the document. The extracted structured data is then ready to be processed into SAP. There are times with exceptions to handle with further approvals and all to get the invoice ready for payment. Each of these steps pose specific challenges and equally opportunities to overcome them as well. The aim all through these steps is to avoid errors in payments and prevent lost opportunities to avail discounts. Data extraction with low errors, automation in data entry, automated workflows to handle exceptions would help automate a vast majority of invoices. Those who opt for a pragmatic approach are likely to see maximum tangible gains soon after embracing the tools and approach with further improvements delivered as part of continuous improvement. We have put together three demo scenarios to share with you, the first of which is what one may call the happy path, as the figure illustrates here. The data in invoice is extracted successfully by Abby. UiPath then validates the data and kickstarts invoice posting transaction in SAP. It keys in the data as if it's acting on behalf of an AP clerk and posts the invoice. There are no blocks or anything that require further interventions and the invoice is ready to be paid. And now let's have a look at the demo itself. As you can see, there is an invoice from vendor received into accounts payable inbox. RPA detects the email as relevant mail to take action. Most the email processing to folder in the mailbox called processing. The attached PDF is open and scanned swiftly by AB's IDP, extracting all relevant data from invoice such as document date, invoice reference number, PO number, PO line details, gross amount, tax, etc. The structured data is passed to a RPA, which recognizes document to be invoice, and then opens the MIRO transaction, inputs the red data into respective fields. As you can see, uh, the company code was populated with right value based on business rules mapping. The rest of the fields are filled up swiftly as well. The posting is simulated to check the balance being zero, and then uh, the invoice is posted. No exception messages were found, and therefore this invoice is ready for payment. Moving on to our second scenario, this involves an exception and we shall see how the robo while processing the extracted data refers to business rules in the backdrop. It recognizes the PO number though a valid string of six numeric characters is still not the right one as it's not in the allowed number range of POs. An automated email therefore goes to the vendor with the message clarifying the reason for rejection. Now let's see how it happens in the demo now. As before, an invoice is received in AP department's inbox, recognized as an invoice by the RPA tool, move to processing folder while the scanning happens. It passes the verification stage as of this stage. However, when RPA subjects the extracted data into further checks, such as passing the PO number to SAP via a BAPI, uh, to verify, it comes back with an invalid number. The rejection is automatically passed over to the vendor, as we shall see soon, by the RPA. The demo shows how vendor's inbox receives the rejection email. It says, unfortunately, we've been able, unable to process the invoice for the following reason, incorrect PO number quoted on the invoice. Now let's move on to our final demo scenario. Scenario three, which involves two exceptions, one detected by Abby's IDP, uh, which detects an issue with the extracted data of the invoice, essentially a few characters on PO lines requiring validation. And later at invoice posting stage, when the robot recognizes that the posted invoice 
uh, however, got blocked. It then swings into action, sending an automated email to invoice queries department within the company to seek their approval to unblock the invoice for payment. Once the approval arrives by email reply, the robo agent swings into action immediately, recognizes the approval is in place, opens MRBR transaction in SAP to remove the payment block. So we shall now see it in the demo. You can see a similar invoice as in previous scenarios being read and moved into processing folder by RPA, read by Abby, which detects certain parts of the PO line text as ambiguous and sends an email out for the user to verify the same. The user concerned then verifies, updates the content, which is saved to Abby and to be passed over to RPA. And the verification happens as shown here. The user ID and uh, password is key input. The attention drawn to a given line is uh, highlighted there and the user keys in any strokes that are necessary to correct the data and then saves the data. The verified content is then passed over to RPA. SAP logon is invoked as before and Miro transaction is accessed to post the invoice. However, after the RPA post the invoice, it will detect a payment block being there as we shall see soon. Currently the invoice is getting processed uh, with the data that was read from Abby. There is a simulation that will happen as always and the invoice gets posted soon. The invoice is therefore triggered to invoice queries department uh, to seek their approval. If they are okay, once an approved email is received, RPA detects the same, opens MRBR transaction to remove the payment block, as we shall see here. As you can appreciate, the payment block is removed from the invoice and it's now ready for payment. That brings us close to the scenarios explaining how RPA's uh, power with Abby's IDP can help process uh, both automated successful posting of invoice and also rejection of uh, invoice where uh, some data is incorrect. Successful automation of invoice processing is dependent on how real world issues and requirements are foreseen and dealt with as business rules before and during invoice posting. A few of them are showcased here. Those on the left-hand side are the ones typically done before invoking the posting of invoice, while those on the right are validations done during invoice posting. The key message to bear in mind is that a high impact set of rules can be configured first to achieve a high percentage of automation, while continuous improvement would increase the percentage of automation going forward. That brings us to the close of this session. Thanks for your time today. We'd love to hear your comments here, please. Also, we encourage you to click on the subscribe buttons to stay tuned for future videos from AG. Thanks again. I shall see you next time.